All right, next up here, I am going to work on my steering knuckles. Uh, so first thing I'll be doing is, is removing this, this stock hub, um, and I will be upgrading it uh, to an SKF hub. Uh, reason for that is that these stock hubs are known to fail. Uh, they're pretty atrocious uh, when it comes to track duty. So this is something you're definitely going to want to do early on. Um, as they start to fail, you'll notice things like uneven brake pad wear, um, and then it could even just get downright dangerous. So you're better off replacing these things early on. Um, when you get them, you'll have a choice to make. Uh, you can either run the stock or the standard length stud, uh, or you can go with an extended stud. So on my other car, the one I built before, I went with an extended stud. Uh, it's quite long, um, and I chose not to do that this time, and I'm not sure yet if that's going to be a good idea or not, so I'll have to report back on that uh, probably down the road well after this video is posted and I get some cycles on it. Um, but in, in Spec Corvette, you're really going to run very close to the stock geometry. Uh, essentially, you're limited to running the, essentially the rear uh, stock wheels all the way around. Um, and so, so you're not going to be running sizable wheel spacers um, to change your track or monkey with your track at all. You're just not allowed to do that. So, um, so I'm going to stick with these the standard stud size and see what happens. Uh, so that's about to get replaced. Uh, the next thing that I will do as I pull that out also is I'm going to just proactively change my upper ball joint here. Uh, AMT is doing that for me on my control arm, so the lower ball joint's already going to be new. Uh, when I put that on, but this one um, I, I'll be doing myself. And so in order to do that, uh, I years ago I picked up a, just a ball joint press. Basically it looks like a C-clamp uh, with a bunch of different fittings. Uh, that is by far the easiest way to get these things out of here. I attempted to do this originally on a standard shop press and it worked just fine for the lower ball joint. But on this one, it it's just really cumbersome and not even remotely worth the effort to try. Uh, the reason for that is that the alignment that you need to get um, is actually blocked by this lower portion of the spindle. So it's just next to impossible to get the proper alignment on there. I even tried to fabricate tools to make it work and it just it just wasn't working. So um, with the proper tool, you'll be able to knock this out in just a matter of minutes. It's, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, so anyway, the ball joints I'm going with are just a Moog heavy duty ball joint. Uh, it is an aftermarket ball joint doesn't change anything about the geometry so it's just a it's just a heavy duty serviceable serviceable ball joint that is allowed uh, to be used in spec corvette um, so uh, so that'll be happening here so i will get to uh to breaking this down and then report back to you as i go all right just checking back in uh, you can see i've removed the hub from the steering knuckle and i've went ahead and i've i've put my ball joint press on and uh basically just Kind of looking through my tools i needed something small enough to be able to press the ball joint back out uh, so essentially i'm just going to crank on this thing it's like a big c-clamp and um and then just use this guy it's just long enough that it should push the ball joint right back into this this cup in the back so uh, i'll just get to cranking on that and uh i uh, should have that thing out in no time all right well that was pretty easy uh, i've got my old ball joint out uh, which is this guy up here, and I'm about to put my new ball joint in. Uh, one thing to note, though, uh, I opened up my Moog ball joint, and what I found inside is not a Moog ball joint. At least it's not a Moog heavy-duty ball joint. It does not match the part number. So um, I had ordered these up from Amazon several months ago, and I just had them sitting. I did not open them up and inspect them. Um, what a what a Moog heavy-duty ball joint looks like, by the way, is something more like this. This is a this is one of the lowers, so it's, a, it's actually a different size than this, but um, this is a, a lower that I had ordered. Um, it has a boot that does go over the top. It comes as a separate piece, and in the bottom, uh, it'll say, like, Moog Problem Solver on it, and there's an opening there for a Zerk fitting, which is also in the box. So I put the Zerk fitting in there, add the boot on, and it's just a, it's a, just a heavy-duty piece. I don't know what these are all about. Uh, they were stamped as being made in Korea. They're obviously brand new ball joints but they look a lot more like the just the stock unit uh, they're not quite as hefty um, anyway Amazon did me right uh, I called them I uh, told them what happened uh, they just refunded the money and they're sending me a new set of ball joints uh, that's going to take a little while to get here though so uh, for the sake of moving this project along I'm going to go ahead and just install these um, and then uh, 
so I can get the car together and get it aligned. And then at some point later on this year, I will be doing this project again to get the right ball joints back in. Uh, anyway, so uh, to go ahead and complete this, I will just get this started and uh, installation will be the opposite of removal. So I'll just uh, put the right size cups on, give myself a little bit of room on this side instead, and, uh, and then drive the ball joint in nice and easy just to make sure that it lines up straight, but uh, they generally go in uh, pretty quick and easy. All right, checking back in. I've got uh, all of my uh, spindles or steering knuckles back together, right? I've got my uh, upper ball joints pressed in. I've got my SKF hubs attached. Uh, these go in with a bit of, I use red Loctite on them to keep them from backing out. Um, and I guess maybe a couple of things to cover are that uh, this is my right rear spindle. Um, you can see I've removed the emergency brake attachment I just don't think it's necessary. I haven't found a lot of need for it, although some people do leave it on. Uh, when you remove the emergency brake attachment, you're also removing the thing that has a little clip that holds your speed sensor attached. Uh, so once I put this back in, all I really do is zip tie this thing out of the way uh, so that it doesn't get caught on anything, and that should be okay. Um, this is my right front, and um, I'm trying something a little different this time. On my other build, I actually used brake ducts and I've had no problems at all uh, with the brake ducts. They've been actually, or I should say with the brakes, they've been working great. I've had no problems with heat in the fronts, uh, no problems with taper or anything like that. Uh, but I'm also hearing from other people that don't run them that they don't have any problems either. So I'm gonna give this a try and run without them, see if I can spare myself the expense of it um, and a little bit of maintenance associated with uh, patching up holes in the ducting and stuff like that. So anyway, in this case where I don't actually have the stock retainer clip on my other car, I was able to retain it here. So uh, so we'll see how that goes. I'll have to report back and let you know what, I'm, what I think about the brakes or the difference between the, the two cars. Um, let's see, another thing to note is that these are C5 spindles uh, or steering knuckles or uprights as you'll hear them referred to. Uh, in Spec Corvette, you're allowed to run the C6 version of this, which is just a little bit of a beefier unit. Um, I don't know that it matters a whole heck of a lot in Spec Corvette because we're running a 200 treadwear tire, so we're not getting a lot of load on these steering knuckles. Often, uh, one of the reasons you would want to do it is because when you get a lot of load on the steering knuckle, it can shift uh, essentially your brake rotor and that can cause taper in your brake pad and cause you to go through them uh, pretty quickly. I haven't seen that at all in my other car running C5 uprights. The other thing though um, that could be an issue is that uh, you can crack an upright and I've had it happen to me one time. Uh, it happened uh, as a result of wheel to wheel contact with another car and what was a pretty substantial hit, but it actually cracked my upright and caused a little bit of wobble in the hub. It was very noticeable and it was the end of my race. So if you wanna have something that's a little bit more reliable, uh, the, uh, you can go with a C6 version of this. So let's see, the other thing to note is when you're putting this together, um, I mentioned that I am not running extended studs uh, this time. I'm gonna try this out and see uh, what I think about it. If you're going to run extended studs, you definitely need to replace the lug nuts or at least take the caps off of them, uh, but they look kind of hideous once you take the caps off. So, so these are just uh, cheapy uh, lug nuts I ordered from Amazon. They are 12 by 1.5, if I remember right, yep. Um, and they're, they're relatively inexpensive, but you can see they've got the hole so that they can come down over the top of the stud. Uh, so these are a good thing to keep on hand anyway, just in case somebody kicks one of your lug nuts uh, while it's on the ground, you're making a tire change at the track or something like that. You're not stuck with without one. So good idea to keep those as a spare anyway. So that is it on the steering knuckles. I'm going to go ahead now and move on to the next phase here, which is getting my control arms back on and getting these guys reattached.